Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Shannon at Chicago on the Make Code Forum. And I promised we would work on it this week. Um, we're working on Make Code Slam. So, Make Code Slam, what is it, Shannon? It's a uh, multiplayer fighting game in the style of Super Smash Bros. Yes. That's why we're saying slam instead of smash to avoid any copyright problems. Not that anyone cares. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so so this has a bunch of characters from around the make code universe. Um, so let's actually turn debug off for a second and we'll look at the characters we have. Okay, we have, of course, the classic Straw Bob. <laughs> Captain Cat, my favorite character. Straw Bob's pretty great, but Captain Cat has a really fun attack. Mm -hmm. Glitch by Lucas Bayhew. And Gideon did not name this character, so I have named it Gideon. <laughs> Gideon's in chat, so please let us know if you have a name, Gideon. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, um, let's go ahead and show off. Oh, the character's name is Rox, Richard, Gideon says. R-O-C-K-S? Yes. All right. Um, okay, so um, let's show off some of these character moves right now. So I'm going to do Straw Bob and Captain Cat, because um, those are the ones I remember how they work. And we're going to go ahead and start this round. Okay, so every character has a few different attacks. Um, first off, you have a punch attack, which is just your basic attack. So this is just if you hit the A button. So you can see with Captain Cat, it is a nice little swipe. His tail gets all bushy. I love it. Um, if you press A and over, you get another attack. So um, in Captain Cat's case, they throw a harpoon. Mm -hmm. This is this is their attack from the Three Brave Cats game. So true. Yes, play the Three Brave Cats. And then um, the best attack is um, when uh, Captain Cat presses B. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> um. Uh, we summon um, uh, the other two bra cats from the Three Brave Cats, um, Sam and Coco. <laughs> um, and this is actually a pretty dangerous attack because it can also hurt you. Um, the reason being that it's pretty powerful. So Sam comes down, says, get him, Coco, and then Coco goes. All right, cool. Um, okay, so in addition to this, we have um, Straw Bob over here. Um, so Straw Bob has... A basic punch attack, which is it's more like a push, really. Um, and then when uh, Straw Bob does over an A, they do this like little windmill type arm attack. It's like this a, is their it's like body slam kind of thing, like wham. Yeah, this is this is their slam attack. This is what they use yeah. to to launch people. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Straw Bob also has. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Um, when you press B, um, Straw Bob picks up a strawberry, at you, then you can throw. It bounces around. It explodes. Um, it's pretty cool. It, it can also damage you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they they never go away until they hit someone. So, <laughs> um, all right. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, Captain Cat's. D doing good. So um, it works kind of like Smash Bros. If you've ever seen that game, we have a percentage down at the bottom. When the percentage goes up, um, the more damage you have taken, the um, uh, more um, likely you are to get launched. So if I were to use Captain Cat right here and launch real quick, let's see, I don't remember the best way to do that with Captain Cat. Is it just like the harpoon attack? No, is, is the only way currently to launch with Captain Cat to use the special? I think so. Um, so I'll just go ahead and summon Sam and Coco, and we'll see. It's job Bob. <laughs> get launched um, pretty far. Um, all right. So um, you might also notice there's a number at the top of the screen. I forgot what this was for, but Shannon helpfully reminded me. Um, that is the DPS of player one. So if I just keep attacking, this gives us our damage per second so that we can balance it. And you see it takes a little bit while to pull up, go up, because it's kind of like a rolling window. So... This basic attack of um, Captain Cat has a DPS of about 16, 15 to 16. And we can use this to make sure our characters are kind of balanced. Um, 
that they're always doing damage, you know, like the same amount. Okay, so anyway, let's get to what we're doing today. Um, I uh, added um, Gideon's character Rox to the game, but um, I didn't finish everything to do with Rox. Um, so uh, let's go ahead, first let's go ahead and change the name. So make this Rox. And there's a few places we have to change that in the code. So let's see. Oh, nope, don't need to change it there. Need to change it here. And then we need to change it in this handle attack button function, which is the real meat of the program right now. Yeah, I'll change that to be rocks. All right, and now we're going to go up to our on start and turn debug off because, um, well, turn debug on, I mean, because um, this will make it so we just start right into the match and we don't have to go through the character select screen. Cool. Okay, so now I am rocks. Um, and with rocks, we have a few different attacks. So the first one is just this basic attack, which is right here, and it has them move in there. I think this is like some sort of blaster or laser device that they have. Um, so you can move that up and uh, do damage. Right now, I think it is exactly the same as Captain Cap because I just copied it from Captain Cap. Um, now, if you press over an A, you launch a little laser, but it looks like I have messed up the programming of that somehow. So if you go to the right, it works a little bit better. Let me, um, let's, let's tweak that a little bit. Also, Shannon, would you mind doing a logo for, for rocks? Ooh, yeah, OK. Well, are those are 16 by 16? I believe so, yeah. Cool. Um, OK, so to fix this, we're going to go to our handle attack button function, because that is where all the attacks live. And let's see. So we're creating a projectile with VX. And it looks like we're setting 300 for if they're facing right, and also 300 for if they're facing left. We want to make this negative 300 so that it is going away instead of into rocks. Um, and we also probably want to change the top a little bit because Rox is a short guy. So we're going to change the top to be the bottom of our thing minus eight. Do the same thing down here. Let's see if that looks a bit better. So we're going to move over and we're going to launch some lasers. Cool. OK. Um, I'm actually going to change this. This is the projectile that um, Gideon made. Uh, the problem is it's, it's nearly impossible to see right now. Um, so I am going to change it a little bit. And uh, Rox is um, music themed because the other thing we have to do is add his um, ultimate ability, which um, we'll take a look at in a second. But um, we're just going to make it so that we launch a music note. Hopefully this will be a bit easier to see. The um, icons have to be one color. Yeah. And ideally not purple because we have some problems with purple showing up on this map. <laughs> OK, Gideon made one. I've converted it to monochrome, and I've sent it All right. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab that. I believe I have a function for this. So we're going to do a DR real quick, which is where we collapse blocks and format code. And I'm going to uh, look for git player icon in here somewhere. Oh, get character icon right here. And we're going to do an else if name equals rocks. Then we will return this one. Cool. I like it. Right. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay, the projectile is still hard to see, so I think I'm going to make it even a little bit bigger. Or maybe I'll give it an outline. An outline will probably help a lot, actually. Um, so let's collapse this back up and go get our um, attack function, which is handle attack button right here. And scroll down to the bottom of this function. Down we go, down we go, down we go, down, down, down. Here we go. All right, we're going to edit our projectile a bit. We're going to make this 8 by 8. Just give it a nice round number, not 68 by 8. Move this down and over, and we're going to outline it. Soon there will be a keyboard shortcut to outline things. Look forward to it. Let's see how this looks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and I think to differentiate him a little bit more from Captain Cat, let's actually make it so this one moves slower than Captain Cat's does. So Captain Cat's moves at VX 300. Let's do 150. Doing all the care. Oh, that's Straw Bob's projectile. Yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> Do, 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 do. Lots of scrolling today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. I like that. Thanks. We got to change the positioning just a bit. So um, right now we're doing this top minus eight. We probably want to do top minus, I don't know, 12 or bottom minus 12, I mean. So that hopefully it lines up a little bit better with the blaster we have. Yeah, that looks better. Oh, yeah. It's kind of Very starting nice. um, far over. Um, so let's also go into our, um, we're also changing the right a little bit. And we're going to correct that a little bit since um, Rox is a little guy. So we're setting the left to be the right plus two. We're actually going to do the right minus Mm. Like six, I think will probably be fine. Left minus six. That should make it a little bit closer. Let's see. Definitely looks better in this direction. This direction, not so good. What did I mess up? Oh, I changed the. Um, let's see, this should be bottom minus 12. Not sure how I did that. Hmm. Oh, shouldn't this be uh, left plus yeah. six? Yeah. Yeah, all right, I like that. All right, cool. OK. So that's nice. Um, let's go ahead and do our ultimate. And um, oh, I should have prepared this. Um, Chin, is there any case you can find the original thing that Gideon made? Ooh, I found it the other day. Mm -hmm. um, um, Kiwi Phoenix in chat asks, do you have double jump in this game yet? No, we don't. Um, that could be something that we give to individual characters, I think. Um, not every character needs to have all of the same abilities, you know? Uh, um, you right now... The link to the code or the art? or Link to the code. Cool. Is, um, Gideon actually implemented a version of the ultimate that I wanted to show off. All right. Let me grab this link. Thank you, Shannon. All right. So we go ahead and attack with our. <laughs> yeah. So we get this um, nice little. Gigantic spray of of. Um, uh, uh, Music notes and a question mark exclamation point animation, which is fun. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about how this should work. Um, I don't think we can make these be a giant smash attack. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would, just, that would be too strong. 
<laughs> um, so what I'm thinking is we. Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Rex should have one attack that does a slam, right? Yeah. So I mean it right now, so that I think his his. You got to make it so that his a over or not a over his regular a does a slam. Let me see. Mm -hmm. We need to. Um, I think maybe add another attack for everybody or something. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the regular attack. And right now it does three damage. That's not enough to slam. It needs to do like 15 or something. <laughs> and um, as a result, it also needs to be way slower because you can't do a slam super fast. That's not fair. Okay, yeah, so that'll slam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just look at the dps just juggling yeah <laughs> there he goes off he goes all right we have fun okay um so uh we need to um do something that kind of captures the spirit of this but but doesn't do a, a slam so i don't know did you did you have an idea um so chat says make each k phoenix says make each note do 0.1% and Gideon says one to two per note damage. So. Yeah, we'll do something like that. We'll make it so each of them does some amount of damage. Mm -hmm. um, and I like how they all have different speeds and some kind of just like thrift. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give them all a lifespan, I think, so that they'll just automatically go and we'll make it go through walls and stuff. So mm -hmm. this is purely a way to deal damage. It's, um, it doesn't, uh, and that might be OP. We'll see. Yeah, I like the cloud thing though. Like that's a cool, cool. Mechanic. Yeah, it looks really, it looks really cool. Which is, yeah. I, I want to keep it this way as much as possible. And this is obviously firing way too fast. We, we, we <laughs> um, okay. So let's uh, do this. So um, right here is where we should be doing our attack for this. And the first thing we need to do is copy over our animation frames. Um, so let's go ahead and edit code on here and, uh, uh, grab these frames for this attack. I think it's called ultimate function. Yeah, I need to bring these over. Suggests, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, also suggests it could be used as an extra jump where it sprays notes and you get boosted up or sideways. So it's like a recoil. Ooh, interesting. If it's that useful, we might need to figure out some way to nerf it a little bit in other. But Rox is little, so. It's true, it's true. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll think of something. I like the idea. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at these to see how many of these I actually need to copy over. And I think I should be good copying none of them over, and I'll just recreate this over here. So one thing I had to do, um, Gideon, I edited your art just a little bit. All I did was you were missing the outline on some of the um, images. So I went ahead and, and corrected that. Um, and also all of our sprites have to be 32 by 32. So I just put it, made them 32 by 32. Um, so anyway, just FYI. And um, we're going to go ahead and make this animation happen real quick. So first thing we need to do is the little movement up and then back down. Oh, I did the thing where I edit the thing that I'm not supposed to be editing. Pull the Richard. Yep. There we go. Um, and I think he does this twice. So let's go ahead and do another edit. Like this. So now we have nice, right? <laughs> um, so he goes down and then up and down and then up. And then he does um, question mark and the arm goes forward and then stays there for a bit then exclamation point and the arm stop. comes back in a frame and then goes forward it's really <laughs> oh yeah you're right you're right it does um okay so let's go ahead and duplicate this frame we're going to select this the marquee tool, move it over, do a little bit of correction. Like that. 
Um, then we're going to go back to forward again. So let's see what we have so far. Nice. Okay. And we don't actually need this one. I thought it ended with that, but it doesn't. <laughs> right. Um, and so it goes back. Then we're going to do a frame with the question mark. And the question mark is while it's back. No, it's forward. Yeah. Right. So once it goes back forward again, we'll go ahead and duplicate this and do the question mark real quick. So. Oh, Kiwi Phoenix has a really good idea, but I don't, I don't know how hard this will be to implement. Um, All right. They say the longer you wait, the more notes slash boost you get. And then if you barely wait any time, you get very few notes. Interesting. We'll put a pin in that. Um, <laughs> I, think I think that we, we oh, can sorry. maybe make that happen, but we should um, prioritize some things here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super into this idea, but it might be a little, yeah, we should do the base tag first before adding. Okay, so here we go. I think I think this is what we want. <laughs> nice. All right. um, now, okay, so this second thing that we passed through is our um, uh, hitbox for this attack. But because this attack is going to be so useful in so many different ways, I think I'm actually not going to give it any hitboxes. So sorry, you cannot do damage with this attack directly. The only thing that damages it is the projectile. That seems reasonable to me. It's going to yeah. be a lot of projectiles. Yeah. OK, and so right now, this last next parameter is the speed of the attack. So if you see right now, it happens all in 400 milliseconds, which is quite fast. Um, so we're going to slow that down a little bit. I need to stop making the, the simulator full screen because then it scrolls me away and then I have to scroll all the way back down here. Yeah. All right, we're going to make this. Uh, let's do 800. See how that looks. All right, slow that down a bit more. We'll do a full second. All right, cool. One thing that's bothering me a little bit Sorry. is can I can I swap can I can I flip the question mark? Question mark is technically backwards. Gotta flip this. Oop. I'm using Shift H, by the way, which is a keyboard shortcut to flip whatever the current selection is. Did I move that question mark around? No, I think. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I did so. indeed. Just in the frame after this. Oh yeah, yeah, it's after. It's the one. That, uh, let's see. This one. Nice. All good. All right. OK, um, so we're going to go ahead and it doesn't actually matter what number we put in here because there's no hitbox. Um, so let's go ahead and do the projectiles now. I'm going to go ahead and copy over the art for this one. So um, let's go ahead and do this. The six by eight. Are you going to give it a go. Oh, sorry. It's a good question. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it looks. Do, 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 create a projectile from my sprite. All right. Um, we're going to do an after however long, just like this. And um, let's see, we can actually yeah, get rid of that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take this, paste this, move it over. Yeah, let's do an outline to be safe. So we're going to change this to be, uh, no, the width is actually fine. We want to do 10 for the height. Go ahead and move this down one and do a quick outline. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, that looks good. What we also want to do is we want to make sure that when we are creating this, it is a random color. So um, Gideon had three different colors, which was green, light blue, and blue. 
And we're going to do this by um, just doing an, let's see, if 30% chance, I think this works out correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon. Because, you know, this should be if 60% chance. Yeah, yeah. This should be if 50% chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you we are also, going to. Sorry. Yeah, what's up? You could do all of this outside of that facing direction. And then. Yeah, you're right. I'll do that. Okay, replace color, change color right here. So um, we're going to change the color in the image of our sprite. So let's go ahead and get that image right here. Change this to be projectile. And go from green to cyan. And then this other one is going to go from green to uh, blue. Um, and we're going to take all of this and put it down here. This will be one. All right, all right, all right. We now have the basic thing, so let's let's just try this real quick. Yeah, okay. So you, you can see it. Nice. Oh, it looks like we're we're always setting the. I don't yeah. know how this keeps getting messed up. <laughs> Probably something weird with the negative sign. It could be. It could also be that I'm just uh, uh, copying it over wrong. Mm. Oh yeah, you're duplicating it to copy the art. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing guessing that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Wait, why is this still? See, I'm facing left. It's going in the wrong direction. Is it just the position is not right, but it's moving into you? Oh, I didn't know oh, the, the position stuff is got moved. Or removed. Um, Oh boy. Okay, wait. So we want this to be like minus probably like 14. Um, we want this to be minus 14. Also, this is the left facing. So we want the right to be left plus let's make this four and we'll make this um, set the left to be right minus four. Let's see if that works. Oops. Do 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 there we go. All right. Weird. <laughs> All right. Sounds working right. Oh, that was so wrong. Oh, I see this got dragged out. Uh. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That looks that looks right. OK, cool. So we're, we're creating one now. Um, we want to do um, some random velocities, though. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in some random ranges for this. Let's go ahead and go into here. And let's actually look at the values Gideon used, because I liked those. Um, so pick random 1 to 100, and then pick random negative 100 to 100. Nice. Me. Uh, Anson Arduino says you need a loading song when you wait for the sim. And QC Phoenix says, yeah, like never going to give you up. So, Richard. I could do Never Gonna Give You Up. I could also do the Mute City theme song, which is what I'm going to do now, even though I know it's actually Big Blue. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to. Shannon can sing it. I don't know if I actually know it off the top of my head. Really? You don't know Never Gonna give you up like if i heard it i would be like oh yeah definitely this but i don't think i can like conjure it do you know the tune i know the words more than i know the tune 
No, okay, wait, I'm doing the wrong part. Um, <laughs> da 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 Never gonna tell a lie. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna. I think I messed that one up, actually. Never gonna something, something, and hurt you. Okay. Isn't it run around? Song. Isn't there a run around bit? Could be. Um, okay. So we're creating the projectile now and we're giving it a random velocity. Um, that looks fine. Let's do this a bunch of times. So we're going to uh, go ahead and do a repeat. Oh, whoops. We're going to go ahead and do a repeat here. So let's put this around everything. And how many was Gideon doing? We might have to tweak this. 20. Okay. That 20 is not seem, that many. Doesn't seem unreasonable. Okay. And one other thing we need to do is right now, these are all just going to, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm into it. I actually really like how slow and floaty some of them are. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the DPS is. Very small. It's very bad. Yeah. What if I get like right up close? That seems wrong. Yeah, that does seem wrong. No, it's, 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 not... It's, at, it's not going up by the right amount. Yeah. Right? Oh, I know what it is. Um, we have a thing to uh, debounce the damage. Oh. Undo. Okay. Um, luckily, we have a way to um, actually turn that off, I believe. So we have a, um, if I remember correctly, there is a like property for this. Um, okay, we're gonna collapse this block temporarily. Collapse, okay. And we're gonna go over to the actual slam thing. So I think that there is a function for this and it's called like do slam or something. Definitely is a do slam function. So is it do attack? Really? Yeah. So. Seems like it. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. This is the uh, function to do the attack on the other side. Um, slam. Here we go. Slam takes in slammer and slammy. Good job, past me. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's see. We have this control lock time. Err. No, 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 that's fine. Then we have this invincible time to, oh yeah, we have slam cooldown. Right, that's it. So um, to make this happen, all we actually have to do is go back to our attack, handle attack button function, zoom way out, scroll down to the bottom, zoom way in, and we just need to set a data on this guy, which is going to be that thing which has already left my brain. What was it, Shannon? Do you remember? Um, I was looking at cooldown. Blam, blam, cooldown. Maybe. Set it to be zero. All right, we gotta go back up and look for it. Same cooldown, yay. Okay, let's see if this improves things a bit. Hmm. Decidedly not. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, turn on debug. Now we're going to head on over to that function we were just looking at, slam. Do you have oh, breakpoints already? It's possible I do. Oh, I can't expand this. Nope. 
Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Now it doesn't look like I'm hitting any breakpoints. Um, okay. So we're going to go right here. And let's go ahead and do this attack. So I'm going to go over here and do that. Okay. So um, let's do a step and see what we hit. Step. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's not setting the slam cooldown. And um, I think that the way this might be happening is, one, I misspelled something. Or two, we should look at the projectile overlaps code, because I think that might have something to do with this. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at that first. Do Daryl. Okay. Uh, so one of these blue ones on sprite of kind projectile overlaps other sprite of kind character mm -hmm. hitbox. That looks right. Call slam sprite other sprite data character as sprite. Okay, so we need to set this on the character and not the uh interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I did this in a bad way. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. We're going to go to projectile. So we call slam. We pass in the other sprite data character as sprite. Um, yes, yeah, slam E. So you do need the thing that is being slammed. Right, that makes sense. Oh, and we're passing in the projectile, right. So this should have that slam cooldown. So I must have just messed something up in the um, angle attack button. Let's go look at that. Maybe I put it outside the repeat. Okay, set projectile data slam strength to one. Set projectile data slam cooldown to zero. Oh, this needs to be at least one. Oh, yeah, but now it's not going to work because it right. needs to be at least one. Can you make it like oh, I, I got it, I got it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> nope, still no. Um, okay, let's debug again. Put this over here, and this one, debug, set our breakpoint back, and continue. Code is not running. <laughs> OK. There you go. We're going to step. And yeah, so it's not hitting that. Greater. Man. Oh, there's a default cooldown. Oh my god, I did greater than zero. Yeah. Cause... Right, so that's not what I want. I want to do if slam cooldown as number is. No, 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 no. You just have a default cooldown value of. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, and we, we need that, but. um. We need to make it so that you can also set it to be not that if you want. Sure. Yeah, so. You just do does not equal. No, I think I need to actually do it this way. Uh, can't do does not equal zero because it might be undefined. OK. Mm, um, yeah. Now let's see. There we go. All yeah, right. nice. <laughs> So oh, that does a full 20% of damage if you hit them straight up. Yeah. That's not even not so bad with the DPS. Like. Um, yeah, I wonder, should we make it a little bit more powerful, maybe? I think so. I'm a fan of more powerful. Um, Unsign Arena says, when uh, can the debugger show sprite data? When. When indeed. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know if we have plans for that right now, um, but it would be nice. I agree. 
Do we have an issue for it? If not, we should create an issue for it. Well, I'll make a note. All right, let's send Strava the following. Okay. Nice. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and buff it a little bit. We're going to go over to our um, code right here. We're going to set the slam strength to be Ooh. <laughs> oh man that's a lot <laughs> okay we'll do 1.5 you could do one and just make more projectiles that's true is that gonna be okay I mean, it's not great. It'll look very, very cool, though. <laughs> That's true. Um, oh, one other thing we forgot to do here is set the lifespan on this guy. So let's do that real quick. We're going to go to our thing right here. We're going to do the lifespan, and we're going to set it to be a random number. There is a GitHub issue. Unsigned Arduino did make it. <laughs> Thank you, Unsigned Arduino. We love you. We do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, we're setting the lifespan to be 1,000 through 2,000. Um, and instead of just making a bunch more happen, I do have one fun idea, which is what if um, we leave the damage as is, um, but we make it so that this goes through walls? Do, 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 do. Projectile, projectile. Starts with a P, the second letter is an R. After that is an O, and then is a, take it, Shannon. J. And oh, that oh. is how you spell the first four <laughs> letters of projectile. We should have like a children's TV show. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's definitely more powerful than it was before, right? Because now you can just kind of... Yeah. Yeah, the walls is good. I'm trying to figure out why I'm bouncing. Why you're bouncing? Yeah. Is it because the projectiles are hitting you? Yeah, they shouldn't be able to slam me. Oh, no. Good point. Why did I bounce there? <laughs> It's like if I'm doing an attack while I hit the ground, I bounce. Huh. I'm sure there's a good reason for that. It's not terrible, baby. Okay, so we're going to make it so that, um, yeah, it goes through walls like that, and we're going to turn the cooldown down. So we're going to make this uh, uh, 600. See how that goes. So I can just run around and just kind of do. I want to make it so it doesn't lock your controls. I should be able to move while I'm doing this one. You know? Yeah. All right, oh. Let's go to do attack. You're only frozen when you do the animation, though, right? Or. Yeah, but I want to run around and do it. <laughs> also, Gideon says, I love that glitch. I think um, referring to the bouncing. <laughs> um, okay, let's take do attack down here. It up, and let's see. We have a um, thing is, let's see. Unfortunately, we have this our controls locked thing, um, which kind of makes it so that we uh, don't fire multiple times. Like it's so that the right. cooldown actually works. Yeah. Um. Did you so. easy way to make this happen because I feel like it would feel a lot better if you could run while you're doing this I 
What is the DPS of this when you're right up next to him? Yeah, so it's not yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think it's okay. It goes up to like 30. But that's if the other person is standing still and not moving at all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So um, let's see. Is there an easy way we can fix this? Um, yes, there is. So we're going to um, put in, we're going to alter this edit function. We're going to do a Boolean and it's going to be lock controls. I think Boolean's default to true. Is that right? Mm. Like this? Oh, oh the actual undo. call. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. so perfect. OK. So our code is unchanged because we've passed through this lock controls and they're all set to true right now. So we're going to go ahead and put this in right here and do that and put this inside of a lock controls. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is um, make it so that we, um, if the controls are not locked, so let's go ahead and do an else. We are instead going to set a value on the sprite. So let's go grab the sprite data block for that. I'm going to set a number. Um, we're talking in chat about different features that would be useful for Arcade, spawning from the Sprite Data Debugger conversation. And Kiwi Phoenix says, um, I still think having local variables that are attributed to specific tiles on the tile map that could be set in the tile map editor would be so cool. So you don't have to make a million slightly different tiles or use sprites for world maps. This was yeah. our original plan for the tile it's map true. editor. True. Yes. Oh. But the UI was really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be extremely useful. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that would be good is having like paintable regions. Um, yes, also in our original design. Yeah, someday. Problems with that too. <laughs> that one I feel like is more straightforward. Um, yeah, but there is a problem of now it's using color to convey everything and um, Yes. Not great if you're colorblind. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, as you layer them on, I think it would just be not great in general. Um, that's true, yeah. To look at. <laughs> oh. We could do, like, a border or something. I don't know. I feel like there's. Hey, do you remember the porcupine editor? Yeah. <laughs> Originally, we had a feature called the porcupine editor. It didn't make it in. <laughs> I mean, I, yes. Also, it had nothing yeah. to do with porcupines, right? It was just the sprite that you drew. Yeah, I just drew an example game, and I drew a porcupine, and it was henceforth known as the porcupine editor. Just like the time that I named this little red dot, I was like, um, when, when we were first coming up with how to improve where you could place a block, um, I came up with this red dot idea in a meeting. And I was like, um, people were like, but, but what does it look like? And I was like, well, um, imagine it's reindeer, um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and the, the light is guiding the way. It's now the reindeer feature. This is all, it's been the reindeer feature ever since. <laughs> or Rudolph, depending on who you ask. I think I called it Reindeer Connector in my pull request. Um, and we are open source, which is why people who are not on the team now also call it that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we are now um, doing this uh, lock controls thing. We need to go ahead and change the parameter in this one time where we're calling the function to be false because it's true everywhere. There we go, right down here, and make this false and see what happens. <laughs> well, all right. We'll make it so that these projectiles can't hit you. What at all ever? Yeah, why not? It is kind of weird to have a damaging, a self-damaging attack, right? No, and right now, all of our projectiles are self-damaging. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> um, 
It is. It does allow you to make a very cool smoke cloud that you can then slow mo stride through. It's true. It's also a good way for you to give yourself over 200% in a very short amount of time. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that. I believe we have a um, thing inside of our slam function for doing this already. Let's go ahead and check that out. Or maybe we don't. Maybe this is in the attack. OK, so let's look at the projectile overlap event. And let's look at the um, player attack overlap event. I'm attack hitbox. Uh, oh, no, no, no. OK, so that's not what we want. So we, we do just want to look at slam, I think. Mm -hmm. Where are you, slam? Um, Kiwi Phoenix requests, unsigned internet requests layer tile maps, um, which uh, would be great. And Kiwi Phoenix requests a checkerboard brush so that you can draw a checkerboard pixel pattern without having to do a million diagonal lines. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I always do the a million uh, diagonal lines feature. I really like to do a full brush feature like yeah. the Sprite does. Um, I don't think it would be terribly complicated, but the UI might. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, we already have this concept of like, <laughs> like nested editors with the tile map editor and the tile editor coming over it. So. Oh, so so the way they do it in a sprite, which I like a lot and doesn't require you to do that nested editor thing, is you just select a portion of your sprite, Ooh. keyboard shortcut. That is now the brush. That's very cool. Yep. Um. Okay. Slam function. I'll be around here somewhere. Oh, let's do a Daryl. Oh, okay. Here it is. <laughs> I knew it was hiding. Uh, okay, so we have if slammer does not equal slammy, I think. Right, 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 right. Um. So let's see. Is this the only place we actually use slammer? No, we use slammer in a few places. Um, so we're passing the projectile as the slammer, I believe. And so um, I think what we want to do is um, we're going to go to our projectile. So let's go to our um, do attack, not do attack, handle attack button function. Zoom way out, scroll way down. Zoom way in. And we're going to set data on this projectile, and it's going to be, oh, not a number. Whoops. We're going to set a, um, do, 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 on here, we're going to set a sprite like this. We're going to name this proxy glamour. One with variable names. And set this to our sprite. Then we're going to go back over to our slam function. I probably should factor this out into a bunch of different functions. Oh, well, it's like it, it has its plus and minuses. It's nice to have every know where everything is inside of the handle attack button. It's annoying to have to scroll a ton. Mm -hmm. OK, so if slammer does not equal slam E, and we're going to get the sprite off our slammer, the proxy slammer <laughs> does not equal slam E. Like that. Okay, it's not damaging me anymore, but it's still getting destroyed. Right, because of overlaps. Okay. Yeah. So let's go just go to our overlaps events. That is over here. And this should be an easy fix. We have this, uh, let's see, we're doing this animation and we're doing this lifespan thing. Um, so we're just going to uh, go into logic, do an if, do an not equals. And I could have just put this whole proxy slammer up here. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> maybe maybe that'll be useful later. Uh, 
might as well put this in here too. All right. Hmm. Still not working. Let's see. I probably missed this up. Uh, oh, 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 I need to do this. Yeah. Oh, that looks great. Yeah. All right, rocks might be OP. We'll see. I, I mean, like, the DPS, again, is like, well, okay. You are firing it off pretty often. That does. It's not doing that much damage, though. Yeah, but it would make it really hard for anyone to get to you, I feel. You could just create, like, a constant little miasma of... That's true. But when you're when you're running around and you're not right next to them, you really don't hit them very much. Like, look, yeah. I'm, I'm this far away, and my DPS is 10. That's true. I think this is okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Mm-hmm. This game's definitely not going to work on hardware, by the way. <laughs> I could probably yeah. make it work on hardware if we spend a little bit of time. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, all right. Let's just drop off flying. It does, yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> Bam. All right. Okay, well, we're at time. So, um, cool. All right, we now have four characters in our game. Um, please tune in next time where, um, if I'm driving tomorrow, we'll probably still be working on this. And then... I don't know. Um, if anyone has any ideas for what you would like to see us add to this game, uh, let us know. I mean, we can always do another character, um, or we could do something like add some more stages. It's probably a fun idea. Um, or maybe add some more attacks to the existing characters. There's lots of stuff we could do. Um, but if we're adding more attacks, we'll probably have to wait till Vivian's around um, so that she can draw some attacks for Shrop Bob. <laughs> okay, in the meantime, I am Richard, at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Shannon. At your count, link code forum. We will see you tomorrow. Bye.